let me know. So today we are going to show you how we prep our canvases to do airbrush, acrylic pouring, resin, uh, alcohol ink. We're going to show you all those different methods that we use to prep. A little bit of everything. Yep. A little bit of it all. I was trying to let it catch you again. Was it on you? Yeah, for like a second. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hey, it works good with one person. Yeah. We're also recording with our alien. So we're going to be prepping one of our new styles of cradle boards that aren't even on the website yet. But um, <gasps> Lord Taylor, what is up? How have you been? Also, hi, Libby, TG, Swamper, Prosperity, Cynthia. Thank you guys all for seeing what we're up to today. So, this is our new style of cradle board. I'll show you one here in a second. He's going to show you in a second um, a little bit about your, that. Your, your artwork to a whole new level. Mm -hmm. I'm just pointing it at you. I don't think you have to do that. They were saying, like, Okay. Can you guys hear Jeff okay? So, we are using, what kind of paint is that? This is just regular flat white house paint. Uh, I, I normally like to use dead flat. Uh, you get it at Walmart. Um, like, I just like it. I feel like it's a little bit more durable, a little bit more opaque, and you don't have to go over your piece so many times. But some of this flat white is not very opaque. Uh, yes, Laura, you have to come to Texas again, spend a little bit more time, take all the pups to the park. All right, so what we're doing I've been putting, like, I've been putting lights on the back of, of our cradle boards, and that's, that's cool, it's fun, but when you hang it, they're actually touching the wall, and I feel like it might make it uneven, um, like, so if you hang something and something's on there, this is going to stick out a little bit more than this part, so the light might not be as even. What we had our guy do, Bert, our friend, is basically cut a piece inside here, like bevel it, just right out. Not bevel, I guess it would just be router. a router. Um, so that way you could put the lights on here and they would project outward. And then, you know, this would be like, this would be up against the wall flush. Put all the stuff in here if it doesn't stick out a lot. Which the new lights that we got actually kind of do the piece so the line will have to go out. I mean, there's obviously going to have to be a line that goes out. Um, but because they're electric, you have to plug them in. So. With these kind, these are these are good. These aren't bad, um, and and these are a lot easier to install than the ones that we're going to be using for these. Um, but basically, it's just a, a sticky side. You just take it off, and just bloop, 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 all the way around. So you can either do it like this, or you can do it like that. Um, and then, obviously, all this stuff goes up inside. This part will pop out down here so that you can plug it in. Um, this is just a controller. You can either have that down there so you can control it from there or hide it up in here since it's flush. It's actually higher, so that's good. You can just give them the remote. Make sure the little remote thing is popped down here so it gives a good reception. But yeah, 
There's Genius. The, uh, turn this off. Um, yes. This this board is being prepped on a, a lazy Susan just because it's easier. And hey everyone that I forgot to say hello to when you guys came in. Um so yeah. The first step of what we do to prep our cradle boards is to paint it with a flat white interior house paint. Jeff today is using Captivate, I think, by Sherwin Williams interior flat or dead flat. If you have a lazy Susan, get you one. It makes it a lot easier to paint your boards, even if they're square. Cynthia, are you talking about battery operated turntable or the LEDs? TG says, that's so cool, I want some, like 10. So after you paint it white with your... Paint? Yeah, you just miss a little right there. Um, with your flat interior paint, uh, then we are going to let it dry and sand it down. And while that's happening, we'll show you how we prep canvases so they don't dip in the middle. All right, so we have a small, these are pretty cheap canvases. Um, normally they are wrinkled a little, but this is what we do. All you do is just get your spray bottle, spray the back, get it nice and you don't have to soak it, but just enough to where you can kind of see it on there. Get you a heat gun. And just heat it up. So this works kind of like how clothes shrink in the washer. Um, so canvas is essentially a cloth. And when you wet it, <clears throat> excuse me, and put a whole bunch of heat on it, it's going to shrink it. And so that'll tighten it so that you don't have as much dip if you do like fluid art on it. And then you would sand it and do the house paint like we just did on this canvas. And then you hear that Again. difference? So you can see, you can tell here, these will go away. You just heat it up more. That obviously came from the same canvas stock. I mean, that's, that's pretty, pretty amazing right there. Laura and Taylor. You just get, what is that? Laura Taylor. That's, that's, that'll be enough of that. <laughs> Thank you so much, Laura. I don't know where our button is. Where are at? You are amazing. You can eat your face. We really, really appreciate and that, Laura. When you when you do that, when it's this tight, a little easier to sand. Um, because when it when it's like this, you got kind of this dip, and sometimes you get lines from this wood. You can kind of see that line I just made there because mm -hmm. yeah. it's real loose. And that doesn't go away, even if you paint it, because it's you're sanding on something solid and it'll basically help you sand it. So it'll make it really a, a, a line, a definite line. So it definitely wouldn't do that. You can kind of see that there. So tighten your canvases before you sand them and then pick up from everything else we're going to do with this part. Laura Taylor, you're a rock star and we super appreciate it. We miss you too super much. Let us know next time you're in this area because she said new, she likes yours better. We need a new hype button. She said she likes yours better. Bye, bye, bye. Hello from Greece. Oh. <laughs> All right. Welcome, Greece. Yes, Debbie, we 
we spritz the back if it's a canvas with water and then hit it with a heat gun to tighten it up and then we'll sand it and then paint it with the flat white. The idea behind that is to, to knock down some of the texture that's already on canvases. And when you do, when you put this on here. TG, I think it's just called a hype button, H-Y-P-E. When you put this on, this will actually help it too. Yeah. It's still. That's crazy. Um, and normally you do want to sand it before you put your, your paint on. Because it'll knock down whatever gesso they have on there. Um, make it a little smoother. You don't have so much to sand. Because uh, as you, you can see, uh, it's, it's a pretty... They're pretty textured. Well, you can't see, but and I just sanded it. <laughs> but see, that is a it's a very flat sounding. Take a little squirt water. I have no idea why that is, Laura. I sent it to the address you sent me the last time. I'm going to check tracking on that. And then send another one. It's hard to get wooden cradles there. I can ship to Greece. Um, obviously, the heavier and the bigger the piece, the more shipping is going to cost. But if you can find a woodworker in your area, someone maybe that's retired, that did cabinets, which is what our guy did before he retired, um, maybe that will assist laura i don't understand the problem but i'm gonna figure it out that's crazy right makes a world of difference so world of difference prep your canvases to tighten them and prevent dipping if you use uh, a pouring uh, method of painting larger canvases it's just canvas if, if I mean you can make it pretty tight it'll it'll be nice but canvas will probably go back if there's weight on it like I'm sure it'll dip a little bit sure if you go to a big size like 24 by 36 like that's yeah huge. Little. Oh, I know I have to repaint that anyway yeah, I'm sure customs are silly high. Wow, Jeff really tightened that bad boy up. So that's his, this has been his process forever because when you do portrait work, when you... Oh, look, you see, so remember those little knots that were at the bottom? That's already gone. In the corner? Yeah, the little corner when you sprayed it. This just tightened it up, like mm -hmm. getting that wet too. Well, the reason why those corner notches came up is because water didn't hit that area when we tightened it. So the corners didn't tighten, everything around it did. Yeah. But putting paint on the front will retighten it. You can still see that sanding line from sanding it before you tightened it right there. Yeah. So when you do, <clears throat> excuse me, like portrait work and you lean your hand on on a canvas, that will change some of the dimensions especially if you use a projector to get your proportions uh, proper and so the tighter your canvas is the more accurate your portrait work will be um, we will be adding the new cradle boards with the light groove on the website uh, we just want we just got these in today so we want to just do some tests, proof of concept, get some marketing photos done because you guys are the first to see them. Would you say the house paint is pretty equivalent to gesso yeah, or gesso same but more very, bang for the buck? Um, gesso is very... Okay, this is the thing. Whenever I paint, I do a lot of erasing and, and a lot of scratching Babe, you don't have to hold. I don't think you have they to. They said it. use your inside voice when I wasn't holding it up. Okay, so 
I do a lot of scratching with X-Acto blade and erasers and whatnot. Um, and gesso is very thin. So once you start scratching or erasing, you're basically taking off that. And when I try to do this house paint, it's a little thicker. I like to paint them at least two times, possibly three, um, just so I can get a good layer so I can do some, you know, a little bit more scratching than normal. Um, and what I use the scratching for is to do highlights, hairlines, you know, highlights in the eyes or teeth or whatever. Um, and it just makes it a little bit more durable. Just so I feel is a little thin and it takes a lot longer to cover a surface with gesso than it does house paint. Like if you like gesso, if gesso works for you, I do like the spray gesso. That's, that, that's a, I, I don't mind that stuff. Um, but maybe prep your board with the house paint so it doesn't take as long and you get a nice layer down and then gesso that board. Maybe, you know, it's gonna be different. When we do uh, that for alcohol inks. Yeah. When we prep for alcohol inks, we actually do all the process that Jeff's about to do and then we do a final layer with spray gesso and then sand that with a 220 because the alcohol inks don't absorb into spray gesso as much as it does these kind of paints, the house paints. But yeah, and gesso is a lot more expensive. Yeah. This house paint is like, I want to say 19. This was in the $19. Yeah. So this is a latex paint. Uh, I like to get outdoor. You can use indoor. But I figure outdoors a little bit more durable. I mean, that's what I assume. I don't know. I would assume outdoors more durable as well. But make sure it's flat. The gloss will take longer to dry. And um, it just doesn't, if you're doing portrait work, it's not the most ideal. Are we going to be home on the 30th? I think so. JJ was asking. I think so, JJ. Let's um, message us after the live feed so we can check the calendar. Yes. This is just 320 sandpaper. So the sandpaper is 320, and he's just knocking down the high points. Yeah. Like that dribble right here, that may show through. I think that's actually on the board. Um, um, yes, we have classes coming up this weekend in Seguin. We're leaving tomorrow at some point. I have no idea what time tomorrow. Um, Marcy from Mixed Media Girl is going to be teaching on the 24th, acrylic pour. And then on the morning of the 25th, Clara is teaching an alcohol ink class, which... I'm super pumped about, and then um, the afternoon of the 25th, I'm teaching resin, such as oceans, and I think I'm going to do a swipe as well. Anyways, we do have a couple seats left in those classes if anyone is interested. Clara has listed some links, um, but you can find all the class information on our website, artistilldeath.com. What's up, Lisa? Welcome to the live. Nice to see you. Yeah, Claire's pretty magical with her inks. Speaking of Lisa, inks? Mm hmm. Oh, yeah. I need a messenger. So, now that Jeff has sanded this piece down with the 320, he's painting it over again, making sure not to leave lap lines or lines that overlap each other. So tell them your process about avoiding lap lines. Well, um, a lot of people, when they do it, um, they're going back and forth, you know, just kind of pressing. Um, you're definitely going to get a line from here or a line from here. Just do it on um, 
um, one of those you can like show. What what I like to do is basically when it's all painted, you have a whole. It's all painted, and if you see some, like sometimes you'll get either a hard line or a definite line, as you can see. What I like to do is put pressure on this side of the on this side of the roller. The handle side. The handle side. So then you go right over here, and you're just basically feathering that out. There's hardly any paint on this, but just go back over until you don't see any lines. All right, so now we got So we'll spread all the paint out. And now what you, what you want to do is just kind of go slow. Like I said, see, you can notice I pressed right on there. And I'm pressing again over here. I'm pressing over here again over here. There's a lot of paint in here because I dipped this in the paint. And then no lines. if you notice there is a line, just lightly go over that. There'll be a little pressure on that side. And there you go. And that's basically what you do with uh, UTC when you're doing UTC. Yeah, that is a good tip for using UTC. Uh, learning so much. So glad. That's what we're here for. Haven't been here for a while. Laura says, y'all are over halfway to 100K subs. It's true. And we're saving that bottle of Dom you got us at 10K for our 100K. Hopefully, we'll pick up some more momentum. So, now that this piece is basically dry with the second coat of paint, I guess it depends on what we're going to use it for, um, what the next step is. But a lot of times when we are in... A situation where we don't know what we want to paint but we want to get something done in the studio or you want to get momentum to art or if you're an artist block prep a bunch of canvases we have two three four five six seven eight nine it is much ten out of the way. eleven twelve thirteen canvases in here we're prepping get, get as much prep done as much as whoa as much as possible so that if you're in an artist block or if you're feeling a funk, like, oh, I don't feel like doing it. If you already have some of it done, the majority, prep like five or six canvases. Sand them. Do everything to just to the point of where you're painting them. Even if you did, maybe paint a, a color that you like for a background or uh, sketch something on it so that, you know, that you remember what you were feeling, you know, or an idea that you had or something. Um, just so that it's there. So maybe you come home and you're like, I kind of feel like painting, but I don't. Oh, yeah. I already have them prepped. Mm -hmm. Look at that. I already got it drawn out. Let's paint it. Let's, do, let's just start it. Mm -hmm. Just enough to start, you know? Starting it is the hardest part sometimes, even if you're not in an artist block. But this will help you feel a little bit more motivated to paint when you have kind of the busy work done. So, this, look at this, I'm going to show them. So these are the new lights that we're, what we're using. I need to put this somewhere. Do you want to put it in, never mind. Um, so, if we were just going to do a, a portrait on that, some airbrush, maybe acrylic. That one's ready to go. You could do just one layer of that on a cradle board in order for it to be prepped for a, an acrylic pour or a resin pour. So I'll show you just the make, make sure you give the house paint the 24 hours to off-gas so that 
it doesn't um, yellow. So these are fun. You could change colors. Um, you can have, got it. There's probably like 15 different colors on here that these change. And they kind of go, they fade in, fade out to different colors. Claire, yes, these will be on the website. They're just not on the website yet because we, we just got them in today. just got them in. And we need to just make sure the kinks are worked out and get some promo, like, pictures for the website. So, and you could do it to music. Or just do it manually. Different colors. See, this, this is the only thing that I don't really like is they're spread out so far. So, if you do get these, this is like, what is this, 16 feet? Yeah, I believe the lights are on our Amazon site. They should be. You can find that down in the description box below this video. I, can't, I don't know. Maybe it's 16 feet. But <clears throat> what I do like about these is you can turn this. Like, you can bend this. See that? You can bend it to a corner. When you take this tape off, it'll stick to just about everything. So... Um, you can turn this if you want, you can cut it and it shows you right where to cut it. So you're not, you know, cutting into something that you don't want cut. Um, I guess you just cut right here at the, where the little arrow is, but you see that <laughs> these are bright. These will do the job. Um, but it won't be a solid glow. You'll be able to see like the gaps. Um, which, like I said, I'm not really a fan of, but it looks fun. It still lights up. It, this is a lot easier than the, than these. So let's take these off. And now, the issue with those are you can see the dots. So if you look right here, that's that same strip of yeah lights. And so we were like, I don't like having so much space, and we didn't want to double it up. So we found these, which look like a piece of neon. Like, imagine that, y'all. So what we're gonna do is put it here, and it will be a solid glow all the way around. Like, we ha we're probably gonna have to do a little uh, hot glue or a little super glue, one of them, I don't know. Maybe a little UV resin, yeah. Um, and these come in all different colors. Um, let me show you the, there's a blue, there's a pink. Um, you, I think the camera is dulling this a little bit, but this is super bright. Y'all, that's insane. <laughs> <laughs> like it's blowing out. Yeah, Ow. you can't even you can't right. even see it. Yeah. If I'm further away, it's like white hot. Yeah. Anyways, so we created. And you can cut those too. We created a cradle with a ledge. Yeah. For neons. And I think that you can get, I think you can get a remote for these. I'm not sure. I do know that you can cut these and splice them. People are making all the neon signs with them. Like our Who Sent You sign is made with this stuff. I'll show them, but you have the mic. Yeah. No. Um, if you, you can see it, like right in between each letter, there's a little wire. And I'm not sure how that works. I'm gonna probably YouTube it and find out. I'm sure somebody's made a video. And any time where it's like a hard bend or a, a really straight cut, I'm sure that's how they did that. Like they just took a little wire, spliced them together and it connects all the way around. 
Um, I cut this one to this length. So yeah. There you have it. There you have it. So if I were... This is not a sponsored video. Oh yeah, not sponsored, but if anybody that does neons or faux neons are watching, what's up? So if I were going to do alcohol ink on any of these boards, I would do the final layer. I would sand it down again with the, what did you use, 320? 320. I would sand it down with 320, and then I would you get... You could use 220 if, 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 you, if you put it on a little thick and there's some bumps, especially canvases. Canvases normally are pretty rough, as you know. Um, 220 is perfect for that. 320 is good for... Because this board is already smooth. You don't need to... Nothing too major. Yeah. So if I were going to do alcohol ink on this, the last uh, layer I would do spray gesso because alcohol inks and uh, mediums like that seem to not absorb as much into spray gesso as it does in other paints. You could also do a clear coat of resin and then alcohol ink over it. Um, but yeah, I would do last layer spray gesso if I was going to go directly onto it with alcohol inks and then sand it with the 320 again, making sure it's super smooth because as you know, if you've worked with alcohol inks, if the color catches on anything, then you're going to see it forever. And a little pro tip, if you don't have sandpaper, you can use paper. It's really weird. I know that sounds crazy. And sandpaper, sandpaper people probably are like, shut up. Uh, one of the ladies in Arizona, what was that place called? Mm -hmm. The little art place that we taught a class at. She's like, if you don't have sandpaper, you can use paper. And I'm like, you are a crazy person. But it's true. Um, is there any difference when prepping for acrylic or resin pour? Uh, if you're doing it on a canvas... I would do step one first, which is to tighten your canvas with spritzing the al nope spritzing water on the back of the canvas and then hitting it with a heat gun to tighten it, and then following the rest of the steps. Whether it's acrylic or canvas, it's the same prep if you're going nope acrylic or resin. It's the same prep if it's going on an actual canvas because. Both mediums are heavy. It's not like super, super duper fine. <laughs> like it's not like super duper, you know, smooth, but amazingly it knocks down. You can hear that. Like it knocks off little high points and whatnot. Pretty cool. Could definitely feel a difference. Hey, Robin. So yeah, the prep is the same whether you're prepping for acrylic or resin pours. The prep is just a little bit different if you're doing it on a canvas versus a cradle board. So yeah, does anybody have any prep questions or cradle board questions Those or? Looks like Jeff's going to have to sand this one down. Well, I think there was paint on the back of that. And, uh, I have to do it. I have to do it. So when Jeff does airbrush, he does two or three layers of the house paint. And sometimes a final layer of spray gesso. We prefer spray gesso over roll-on gesso because... Roll-on gesso is just thin, I feel. Roll-on gesso is really thin. And it's expensive for what it is. And it is definitely more expensive. And I feel like the spray gesso lays on more smooth because it is an aerosol. And I feel like there's some kind of property in it that helps um, alcohol inks not soak into your substrate it makes it not porous. I don't know. Words are hard. 
Anyways, any more questions? And if you put paint on the side of these, like if you notice, if you try to sand a cradle board, it just doesn't work. Um, I would suggest painting the side and the top. Um, obviously, you don't want to. If you try to sand a cradle board before it's painted, it makes it rough, which is really weird. You're going to end up with um, peach fuzz. Yeah. And the sides, you can paint and then sand. You might have to repaint them after you sand them because it might knock some of the paint off, but you can still get these nice and smooth if you want resin to run over them nice and smooth. Like. Um, we're coming out. Love eScience. Well, thank you. I'm a fan. I... Um, we're going to have some more merchandise come out with our go-to slogans soon. Um, I'm trying to see if I have any spray gesso. Yeah, we're going to do them in square or rectangle as well for the backlit. Should we sell the neons with the cradle boards or just the cradle boards and you just find your own neon? I don't know. I mean, we would have to stock a lot of colors then. Yeah, and that would be. You wouldn't even know what you would get. There is there is one though with the with the fun neon, the good neon that turns different colors. And I think it's like around forty dollars. I think forty seven bucks or something. I'm not sure. That's almost as much it. as the and board. You can cut that. You can cut it however long you want it. And it's spliceable. This thing is still on. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Um, I haven't tried to buy spray gesso in a while. I usually buy it by the case from dickblick.com. Not sponsored, but if you're watching, what's up? Uh, can you show us how you spray? Are there tricks to the trade? Hi, Debbie. I don't have any spray. Uh, let me see if I can find some spray gesso. Ooh. Um, can you just spray a board white and that may give some insight into how we, I'm surprised we don't have any, we have a lot of fixative, okay, so Get it. Get an easel like this. This easel is amazing. Are you going to tell them all about it? Or? No. Okay. So I can't find any... It goes up and down, basically. And it's very heavy so. duty. What? I don't understand what... We just get one of those little canvases that we just prepped. So, because they want to see how you spray. If there's tricks to the trade on how to get an even spray. Well, it depends on if you have the type of uh, the type of spray paint we have. Um, what I've noticed, I always thought that you have to like spray it evenly across when you're doing like a big background. And what I've noticed is if you use like a stock tip because it's such a, like, it's, like these, you wouldn't want to do this because it comes out such a solid line, such a nice, that you, you would probably get lines in there. You'd probably see them. But if you use just like a stock tip that comes on your, uh, your, they, they, they'll be able to hear it. Okay. It drives me crazy. <laughs> Um, I didn't take that one yet. See, this is just, it's such a crazy spray. Like, it, there's no direct, like, it's just, it just comes out. Um, Being a well ventilated space. Um, you don't have to do the whole thing. I was just thinking of, 
showing how you stop spraying to not have those like bulbs of. Oh yeah, just like this. Like all, all you're doing, all we're doing is just, you're spraying where you want it to go. Don't sit there and like, like use up all your paint on one little area. Like what you're doing is just paint, 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 paint. Definitely gonna start feeling that right here in your, in your hand. So you might wanna practice or just don't paint for too long. There's a, an attachment for spray paint, like a trigger attachment. Um, so if you just hold the button down and spray continuously, you're gonna end up with areas that are overlapping and that have just built up color. Yeah, and it takes a lot longer to dry if you have just spaces where you're just like doing this. You can see, look at all that. That's just leaving the paint on. There's See that little bubble right on. there? That can happen if you just keep your, keep the button pressed down. So when you spray, spray one direction and then let off your trigger and then spray in the other direction. That is a key tip for. Basically how you airbrush too. Yeah. I missed how you spray and heat it to tighten a canvas. Okay, we'll show you guys on one more. Will you um, grab one of those? Do you have the cradle boards with the ridge available on the website yet? Um, hopefully I'll have them up today. I, I would have to get them cut, so essentially it would be pre-order. Hi, Margaret. Our friend in Greece says that's exactly what happened to me today. And it took way too long to dry. Yeah, there'll be dry spots. There'll be, you know, semi-wet semi spots. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. 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 So, what is this? This is a 20 by 24. Like, you can see this is... Very loose. All you do, just take your spray bottle. I would definitely just try to get it. As much area covered as possible. Go over it a couple times. And then It is J-Science, for sure. Laura Taylor said, I did not know that about spray paint. Thank you. So now he's just hitting the back of the canvas with the heat gun to basically just like shrink the canvas. Shrink it up. Yeah. Um, the analogy I mentioned before was putting wet clothes and the dryer on high heat, it'll shrink some fabrics. And linen or canvas is one of those fabrics that will shrink with high heat. So essentially, we're forcing the canvas to shrink around the frame in order to tighten it. Also, painting the front side with um, the house paint and drying it with a heat gun will further tighten it for you. So in just a moment, we'll show you the sound difference. I mean, that's like a drum. Sorry, I got that's too close with the that. mic and it vibrated on you guys. I know you guys felt that. So that's how we tighten actual canvas in order to paint on. That's how we prep our boards. And I'm glad we got to show you our new cradle boards with... Um, that was just kind of a, like an accident having a new board now. Mm -hmm. I was just doing it just for me, just to say, I want to be, I didn't even think about, I didn't think about selling them. 
But if you guys want them. Yeah. Look who's here. Look who's here. Hi. I'm standing. She is standing. So, all right, you guys. Um, we will be traveling down to RK3 Designs tomorrow to do uh, class there this weekend. So if you stern. want to sign up, you should. Very stern person here. The piece just started. Yes, that is vamp lurking. So Jeff started this piece. And he prepped it the way I just mentioned. Super smooth. And so, yeah. I'll be posting from RK3 Designs this weekend in between doing the classes. If you're wanting to join, please do so. We have a couple seats left. And so, yeah. You guys have an awesome day. Thank you guys super much for donating. It all goes right back into the channel and for coming in and seeing what we're up to. So, please leave a thumb for me and subscribe if you haven't already. And so, yeah, I hope you guys learned something uh, or otherwise entertained. Well, thank you, Kathy. Um, so, yeah, we will see you guys next time. Tomorrow won't be live, but uh, we will be posting from RK3. So, y'all have an amazing day, amazing weekend. We'll see you guys later. Be kind to one another because you never know what someone's going through. And always remember that Jeff says this line, so I don't have to. So we do the test. So you don't have to. Beat the devil out of it. And always beat the devil out of it. So, yeah. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. I said bye. I said bye.